Okay, Bishop, you are live. Well, brothers and sisters, we are back and I am honored tonight to have with me uh, some illustrious guests who will be able to represent and reflect several perspectives from the word of God regarding um, how to live out your best version of yourself. Amen. I thought that would be a very befitting topic, especially here in January as we initiate uh, the launching of our new selves into a new year. Some of you, uh, as we started in 2020, were expecting doubles, 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 doubles by the doubles, on doubles, in doubles, from doubles. And you expect for everything to double regarding favor and regarding blessings and re regarding goodness and reg all those things. Well, need I tell you that 2021 is actually the actual year of manifestation because before manifestation comes, your situation has to be tested. So even though 2020 was prophetically the year of doubles, we had to go through struggles to get to the doubles. And so now is the time to open up your expectations as never before. And I wanna encourage those of you who are under the sound of my voice to prepare now to live the best version of yourself. Yay! <laughs> Praise God. No better way to start 2000 and, uh, 2021 than to uh, initiate the exchange of living your, or becoming your best version of yourself. Now, to start tonight, I want us to talk about uh, overcoming this I can't mindset. If we're going to live within the sense of the possible, we're going to have to defeat this I can't mindset. I brought out something earlier today that one of my uh, grandsons thought was very interesting. I said to him, I said, now you do realize by the time the average human is age 17, they have actually heard I can't approximately 150,000 times. That's a lot of I can't, isn't it? Compared to uh, at the same age, relative to the same age, they have heard I can or you can approximately 5,000 times. That's 30 no's for every yes. That's 30 I can't for every I can. Now, that's a very frustrating reality, but believe it or not, that's how we learn to believe I can't. Now, it doesn't seem like it takes a great deal of effort to believe I can't, does it? But when I can't has become an established presence of mind consciously, it means that the ready state that I walk in is an I can't state of mind. And here's what I'm saying. The reason it interferes with the sense of the possible is because when God shows you something astronomical, phenomenal, something unique, something different, something that stretches your imagination, it becomes very frightening because you've never done it before. And all you've ever heard accommodational to that is you can't do that. That's impossible. Don't even try that. You're going to look like a fool trying that. So if we've heard that approximately 150,000 times, do you all see tonight how difficult it would be for any of us to attain to some new challenge where God is trying to unveil for us something in a, in a ready state of mind for us to get busy right now. I'll, I'll say oh, this, since, you all are since you're hesitating, Elgin, I'll say this. Even when he calls Moses, you notice when God works, he's expeditious. He comes down to the mountain. He calls Moses to the bush that's not consumed. It burns. He tells Moses why he's there. And then immediately while he's talking, he doesn't give Moses time to think about development, training, uh, meditation, uh, right. changing. His, he says, come now, let's go. And Moses says, wait a minute, who, wait, 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 who am I? <laughs> who am I to go talk to, to deal with Pharaoh? The Lord said, come on, boy, I'm, I will be with you. See that? So he wants us to understand that if we are walking in the readiness state of mind, we're, we're in the Bible testifies of Abraham that now... Uh, Abraham believed consistently that he who had promised was able to perform 
what he had promised. So he staggered not at the promises of God. He walked in a readiness of consciousness, ready to do what God said, because he believed that if God said it, that settles it. So talk to me. How does that affect you all? We're talking about walking in the best version of yourself this year. And I'm saying each of you have the propensity to do it starting now. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Bitch, but I, I um, got more to say now since you went on. <laughs> so, but no, um, you know, I, I um, part of me getting my life coach certification, you know, working on, you know, uh, being the best version of me this year, launching up a life coaching company here. Uh, I studied neuro-linguistics programming neuro linguistics programming and something you were talking about earlier about every time you hear i don't it's cutting a neurological pattern firing synapses and neurons through your brain it's creating a, a pattern and you, know, you almost think of you ever been somewhere or had a driveway and the water always flows down a certain pathway with that driveway that's because it's, it's become familiar with that path and so when your brain is hearing 150,000 times no 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 to the negative sort um, it's cutting a pathway in your head to think that's the predominant reaction to what comes my way. And so what happens is now we just start doing it like that stream going down the driveway. We just fall, find ourselves falling into lane, or falling into that flow, not realizing that we've been programmed. <laughs> we've been programmed over the years to believe that no is our predominant response to situations of opportunity. And so it requires us to have faith. The second thing I'm going to say, you're we talking, and I was like, wow, so then Abraham believed it was God. That's why he went up to the bush. But he believed, oh, he, let me say this way, he believed God was calling him, but he faithed his way over to the bush. You know, sometimes you say, well, I hear somebody calling me. Now, you believe somebody's calling you, but until you make another step towards going towards it, that's not faith. You just have a belief. Awesome. But when you start walking towards the voice of that call, that's because faith is calling you. When he told the girls, he said, send your, your wives back and, um, to Egypt and ask them, neighbor for all the gold and silver. Well, they believed now by all these miracles that was happening that God was definitely moving on behalf. They believed, they knew it was God, but they still had to have the faith to go back and ask these people, hey, let me have that, let me have this. And so um, the sense of the possible is, is to believe is the one thing, but we have to have the faith to put into action. So therefore, once again, Faith without works is dead. When you were talking, I was just seeing all that, Bishop. Like when somebody calls you and, and you're not sure if they call you, you start staggering. If somebody, you staggering and you think somebody's calling you. See, Abraham, he didn't stagger. He believed, he had faith, and he moved. He didn't say, I, I think that's what God said. I, 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 I. He just jumped on out there and did it, man. And um, that's what I saw all that while you were talking, Bishop, like the movie. Wow. <laughs> awesome. Well, I love it. Keep going. Come on, Trina. You're laughing, Carmen. <laughs> I, I, I know what I. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Mm -mm, go ahead. You're good. <laughs> I I know. I was I was uh, one of the things that I really really love about Abraham and that encounter is just this one phrase when he was leaving and he was taking his son, his only son to be sacrificed and he looked at his tribe and he said the boy and I will return come on and if that doesn't say anything about where his faith was yeah I mean he just he didn't know how he didn't have any information God didn't give him any details all he knew was to go and do that to be obedient and to me, that just spoke volumes about my faith. It actually challenged me to dig into what made Abraham so confident and in and, and such a position to where he just automatically believed God. No matter what he said, he just right, believed right. God. And I think we all can get to that point because we know he had faults too. You know, we, we know some of the things he done. I mean, all we have to do is think about what the, the position he put his wife in, then we can, <laughs> you know, get a, a real good idea yeah. of just how off he could be sometimes. But by the same token, he knew how to get to God, Bishop. Right, he right. knew what it would take to get him to that level of faith to where he just trusted God. They had such a relationship such a relationship that they were friends, you know? Yeah, yeah. 
And, and, and for me, that challenged me. Okay, so we can get to know God in such a personal way that we can trust him more than we even trust ourselves. Come on. Well, that's the, that's the goal. That's good. I like that. Go that's ahead, Trina. <laughs> oh, well, I just enjoyed listening to y'all. It's always so insightful just to uh, sh hear everybody's perspectives, you know, what everybody brings. Amen. I appreciate the panel for that. Um, but, you know, we were, I was thinking about, you know, what you said about hearing I can't, you know, so much. And then also um, the title, Living Out Your Best Version of Yourself. And really what, what that brought to mind for me was that when people tell you that you can't do something, they are making that determination based off of the version that they see being. Mm, that's good. That's where their cans are, what you can do and what you can't do. They're judging that based off of how they see you. Wow. Okay whether that's your parents or your uh, teachers, you know, I hear so many uh, people that have had success in life celebrities to say, you know, teachers that were so discouraging to them that told them that they wouldn't, you know, be anything or wouldn't amount to anything, or they, you know, would never do this or never do that. And that's based upon that teacher's perception or even your parents' perception. Sometimes your parents can't see beyond themselves or beyond their condition to understand that God has a purpose for you. And so the challenge to me, as far as finding the best version of yourself is particularly as you move towards adulthood and even as you start to get towards your thirties and forties, you have to stay connected to see what God has for you. Because you know, nobody's the same at 40 as they were when they were 20. That's good. So, so when we think about the ver what version of ourselves you can be the, your best self at 20 or or not but but you constantly get a chance to go back and uh commune with god you know seek the heart of god, mm. and the heart of god mm -hmm. your life to find out what god says that you can and cannot do mm -hmm. you know let the word of god be your god for what you can or cannot do because mm -hmm. god is creating he knows exactly what you were designed for mm. So you really can't trust somebody else's version of you that they see. You can't trust mm -hmm. that to it. You know, I've heard people, um, I remember when I was in fifth grade, I've always been a, a strong writer. So is my mother. So is my grandmother. It's just in the genes. And I used to write stories for fun, like, you know, narrative stories or even like plays. And my teacher found my notebook on the, um, in the classroom. And she was sharing it with another teacher saying, oh, I think she should be a writer. You know, shouldn't Trina be an author? And I thought to myself, I wouldn't want to spend all my time day in and day and night. You know, it's something I just did as a hobby, but it wasn't at the heart of who, who I am, you know? And then I've had people say, oh, you should be a principal, you know, because you, you're a good leader, you an educator. You should, I don't want to be no principal. I don't want all that paperwork and all that. <laughs> Uh, you know, teachers are a mess. <laughs> to deal, you know, to deal, I don't want to deal with that. I'm interested in, in getting in these people's houses, dealing with these parents to help them do what's best for their, their children. I feel like that's my hand in society. And so it's interesting, even in this conversation, the person that steered me in the right direction was actually my mother. But I know it's because of her connection to God, because she even steered me mm. a little away from where I was currently going and thinking but she felt led to have a conversation with me and that's what led me to just really snap right in place with where I needed to be wow. um and so I think you have and and over the years you know it's to the point that I can commune with God for myself to find out what I need to do what Amen. I need to work on and um even here recently I started to notice things about myself and I'm like my parents should have told me, you know they should have been on top <laughs> you know, worked on this with me or, or whatever. <laughs> and then I had to have to realize that, you know, God is my parent mm -hmm. and the things that my parents can't see that I need to work. It's not the responsibility anymore, first of all. Um, but God moves me towards a better version of myself by me listening to him and him telling me, you know, you need to look at this area of your life, find out more about this. 
I want you to do this. You know, sometimes God gives you long-term goals. Sometimes he gives you short-term things to work on. But when we learn to trust God and hear from God and commune with God, you know, mm. that's, that's <clears throat> us to a better version of ourselves at any point in our lives. Mm. Uh, you went all the way to the end of the lesson uh, at the latter part there when you start talking about, uh, you know, getting, because I talk, in, I talk in the end, the last point we're going to make today is going to center around um, getting some uh, instruments to assist you finding some things to help you with thinking mm -hmm. and planning the two different things you know because a lot of times getting off the launching pad people have problems thinking through objectively mm -hmm. uh how to strategize initiation the other thing that people i find have difficulty with is planning planning their lives god said to me your time needs an assignment and so what i did was i sought modules i did all kinds of things initially to help me better deal with the use of my time. And you discover that the, what works for one person may not work for another person. So you gotta keep looking. If you're hungry enough, you will find what works mm. for you. Now, but before we go there, I mentioned earlier today also in the second point that I don't struggle to live right. My mind is now conditioned to the spirit of righteousness and is activated uh, through faith. This means that my convictions are more about righteousness now than sin. In mm. other words, um, my, I find myself thinking about what can I do that pertains to the word of God, the will of God for my life. It's called a conviction in righteousness. When we are outside of the kingdom, we find ourselves struggling opposite that, diametrically opposite. We struggle with a conviction of sin. Now, Whatever your conviction is will determine your response. And the response is what gives us the procedural ability to accomplish. I like that. The procedural ability to accomplish. Now, so in other words, when I was a practicer of sin, I could premeditate my sin because I had a conviction of sin. Do you see that now? Conviction of sin means I needed to find out how to do it and how to do it well and how to pull it off smart. You see that? And how to be prudent about it or subtle about it. Well, from this perspective, I have a conviction in righteousness. So now I'm always thinking about that which pertains to wisdom and the principles of righteousness, how to love better, uh, how to forgive easier or swifter, or mm. how to be more patient, long-suffering, enduring or endurant. You see that? perseverant. I'm learning now how to be convicted in righteousness pertaining to the fruit of righteousness. But I'm learning also that it's coming from this continual uh, habit of mind that I cultivate. You all with me? Because I learned that the habit of mind you cultivate determines the conviction of your, your operation. Boy, mm. the habit of mind you you cultivate determines the conviction of your operation. Now, some people say, well, I try so hard to do this thing that I believe that, that, I, that God has called me to do, but I get discouraged because it seems so difficult. Well, if you were convicted, you wouldn't quit. Do you all see what I'm saying? Conviction yes. here is that extra sense that gives us the, the, the extra fuel to persist towards the thing that we believe is accomplishable. If that, if, did I say that good enough? Mm -hmm. So when we believe it's then, then we, we become so hungry till it doesn't matter what we've got to go through in order to accomplish it. We are tenacious because we know like Abraham that if God said it, that settles it. And that is for me. I am going to persist until I succeed in this thing that I believe God is sowing into my heart by way of a conviction. Yeah. Talk to me. That, that word conviction, um, what I heard was like, um, it's, like a magnif it's like a magnifier, amplification. Um, I, I, I can call someone and say, who did such and such? I say, Tommy did it. Who did If I read that, if I'm convicted of what I know, I say, Tommy did it. I mean, everything changed my behavior, my attitude, even how I approached that, that the rest of that conversation, just three words, Tommy did it. But it goes from Tommy, Tommy did it. 
to Tommy did it because I'm convicted. I know it ain't just what I heard. It ain't just what I believe. I know this thing to be what it is. And that's, that's, that's that conviction. So it amplifies my intensity towards the goal that God has put before me. Uh, that's, that's, what, that's what conviction saves us. So that's, that's just trying to, that's what I heard when you were talking. Um, you used the word earlier today too, Bishop, this morning, uh, you said cultivate. Because again, I, if, if I could take the top yeah. of my head off and cut off and looking, I, what I see is dirt inside of mine and like little, little farmer rows where they got the little, you know, the oxen in, they put in the road. <laughs> and Go ahead. now I'm, I'm asking myself as I see this, what seed is, what am I putting my, and what am I cultivating? Notice the ground, have, the ground, the mind has to be prepared first. Yes. Then mm -hmm. I have to do intentional, uh, I, have to, I have to do intentional preparation of the mind. And yes. then I have to be mindful of the seed that I'm sowing in my mind because I know whatever I cultivate shall become more. Because one chili pepper seed, those little small little white seeds, can bring a harvest over 10,000 chili peppers, that one seed. So I have to know exactly what I'm sowing and cultivating my mind because, see, that's going to bring me a harvest whether I like it or not because God said, I'm not going to be mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that's what he also reap. So now I have to be intentional and know I'm showing this, as Bishop was just saying, I love that, more, it's more of a righteous concept of thinking that, it's, and not morally speaking, speaking of righteous alignment and right alignment with the will of God for your life. And how is this thing going to work for me? So you can uh, um, sin or a weight could be something, it could be your job. Your job could be in the way what God is trying to do for you. That's in between, mm. you know, it could, be, it could be the kind of, it could be anything. So it's not just about, you know, or if you're cheating on your husband, and da, 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 it, it, it's, it's just about are you aligned in the trajectory of where God is trying to shoot you as an arrow to right. accomplish the mission for which he spoke you into this, this earth and realm for? Are you going that direction? So now my mind, if I'm putting the right seeds, it's going to create that shade for me now as it begins to grow, the harvest will be to grow my mind. And that shade, I'm speaking metaphorically, I hope you can see this, this illustration I'm doing, <laughs> this cartoon thing on my head, and I got this big bush growing. They ain't here, but trees, see leaves of a tree, and it's keeping, um, keeping me under the shade. It's protecting me from the elements. Now, the thing that I've been sowing in my head, which is righteous line of the will of God, is that one thing is blessing me in multiple cases. It's not just money. It's peace. It's, it's tranquility. It's safety. It's security. It's, it's, God's got me covered because of my intentional song. I'm going to be quiet. I'm getting preachy. Oh, keep going. You're good. <laughs> well, I know one of the things that... Um we have to, we probably can all, you know, attest to is that we do get a lot of influences from external stimuli. You know, we hear not just I can't in our own heads, but we hear I can't at school, we hear I can't, right. you know, at work, we hear I can't at home. So, you know, if we're looking at TV, the message, the undertones is always generally, not always, generally something that we need to overcome or retrain our thoughts. I and that. I heard a pastor say once that one of the hardest things we can ever do is to change our thoughts and to change our way of thinking. It is probably the most challenging thing because it's almost like our brain, well, this is like an oxymoron, but it has a mind of its own. Yeah. It like can function without us. <laughs> it can suggest to us, right. even when we think we're on the right track. So if you can visualize yourself, that better version of you, you've imagined it before, you've seen it before, you've thought about it before, what does it look like? You know, what things do you need to do to get you from where you are now to at least to the next point in your journey, you know, and, you know, thinking, doing the um, reciting the affirmations and the positive affirmations and, you know, my home is a storehouse. I am a millionaire. I live above and not believe, beneath. I'm a lender, not a borrower, you know, and those type things, I think, comes with habitual use. And as you do that continuously, yeah. make a tape of yourself, listen to it at night when you've fallen asleep. Wow. But just notice 
keep keep a journal notice as you do this how your very way of thinking improves i mean that's that that's my own testimony so you know that's one of the that's one of the i think one of the most important things we can do in our walk yeah i, I agree i think it's absolutely one of the most important things that we have to do Yes, um, and I think just like anything else, the more we do it, the easier it becomes, mm -hmm. because, you know, truth, truth be told, um, I, you know, I'm in the world of therapy. So I'm in the business of causing change from yeah. what's, what's disordered or dysfunctional. But a lot of that goes to changing the brain. Mm -hmm. and, and quite honestly, it can be done. It can be done, but it goes back to teaching your mind, letting something else, something new become so, so habitual that it becomes your norm. It's yes. not new anymore. You practice yes. so much. Um, just like the, um, oh, I wish I could remember her name, the young lady who did the um, poetry yesterday. Mm -hmm. I know well. Cindy would know her That name. was really good. Yeah, you know, but she was very open about her, her speech impairment. Um, even into her 20s, not being able to say an R, that is, I mean, that's significant. We really wow. by the age of like nine to have mastered the R wow. for her to still be struggling with that into her twin. That's a significant, um, yes. you know, something to try to overcome. But um, she talked about the fact that she would find um, songs and um, other poems and things that had high frequency of the R and the L sound in it. Mm. So that she would practice it. She could implement what she had already been taught because God knows we teach, the kids, we teach them early what to do, but it's a lot about trying to make it a habit and, and right. her decision and her drive to make a change is what caused the change to actually happen. The fact that she was committed to persist until she could master that. Um, and her being able to accomplish that, especially that late in life, that is a tremendously honorable, um, you know, something to be uh, honored or to be uh, rewarded, not rewarded, but recognized for um, mm -hmm. the people. Um, but I think it also goes back to the scripture of as a man thinketh, so is he. So whatever you choose to think on, that's what will manifest in your life. Mm -hmm. So it's, it becomes um intentional there's your word uh elgin we have to be <laughs> intentional about replacing thoughts because thought is like you said Chloe, yes it kind of has a mind your brain has a mind of its own mm -hmm. and it will go back to whatever is yeah. automatic whatever has been uh programmed blindly blindly a lot of times that programming happens very blindly and so mm -hmm. you have to point to where you want to make a you you decisively make a change and become intentional about what you're putting in your in your heart, in your mind, in your ears, mm -hmm. in your eyes, so that those things will match up with where you are going. And wow. then that becomes your norm, but it's almost like a job. Like you have to be very intentional about what you're thinking about, you mm -hmm. know? Be, be mindful not to let your mind wander or to let your mind go back to those negative thoughts um i mean it's it's a it's a job <laughs> you know but it's a part of uh becoming a better version of yourself see see that's why i have you all as a panel uh and i want to commend you right now for how each of you gave us a different version of uh, an, a real exegetical version of this com this part of the conversation because there are people who need to hear this uh from a different perspective and you've done it so eloquently. Um, this last point, Trina, where you used the young lady that was uh, that recited her poetry, and the difficulties that she had to endure in order to become of sound speech. See, I'm very familiar with that. That is my life story, uh, having to be very persistent. You hear me tell the story of uh, action. This is no stretch. Uh, you'd be amazed at how I would literally take dictionaries that were um, <clears throat> actually, let's say uh, from an inch to uh, two and a half inches thick and literally challenge myself to study, to read through, to learn how to actually uh, break the words down into syllables, 
so that I could enunciate it properly for memory and then be able to use that as a part of my diction in order to remember the definition. So I got little clues. And so it allowed me to develop a type of uh, spontaneous of speech where there are times when I'm, I'm like, where did that come from? Now, I'm not trying to make myself seem <laughs> like I'm very eloquent. Now, that's not what I'm, my point is, I could have been a dummy <laughs> because I struggle, but I would not allow myself to go out like that. My determination was that I'm going to present a better version of myself. So uh, the majority of the time, when you hear my messages, they're going to challenge you because life was a challenge for me first. Do you all hear that? In all of my lessons, it was a challenge for me. So not being uh, born with the gift of academics, not being able to uh, intellectualize uh, mathematics and to conceive it in a way of readiness so that I could know it um, and use it to pass a test. I always needed to sit beside somebody that could help me with those things <laughs> that I struggle with if I wasn't home with one of my siblings. It made me uh, want to <clears throat> be a better version of myself. So it wasn't how people saw me. In fact, the scary part of my life was, I think in the early phases of it, people thought more of me than I thought of myself. And so I wanted some form of equivalency. I wanted them, I wanted there to be um, not getting close to me and discovering, oh, that he's nothing like I thought. I wanted them to get close to me and say, boy, there's more to him than meets the eye. You see what I'm saying now? It's kind of like, uh, I think I heard Oprah say it one time, that wow factor, woo factor, whatever you call it. I wanted people to say, wow, he really does have a lot of substance. And so for years, believe it or not, from age uh, 17 to about 19, I lived in a zone of needing to have something to say. And something used to press in me. Uh, son, you, you have something to say. Well, if I needed to have something to say, I needed to know how to say it. You see what I'm saying? I didn't want to be the dummy in the room. I didn't want to be the person in the room that when it's my turn to speak, nothing I said makes sense. <laughs> and then I didn't want to be trying to kind of uh, say back feedback on what I heard and not properly conceive it. Mm -hmm. So that's what started my journey, my quest, my persistent measure of reading. And so I taxed myself after I got married for years, I would not allow a book into my home unless I read the book. I had to read all the way through it. And then after age 25, 26, I allowed myself to bring them in if I read two thirds of it. And then later I noticed that most of what I had read was the foundation for other things. You'd be amazed. There were years in my life where I discovered Elgin and you like this, that a lot of the authors that have written in since the um, the late what uh, since the fifties uh, or sixties, were all mimicking things that they had picked up foundationally from our original fathers. Did you all know that? Wow. So what I learned was there was nothing new under the sun. Right. <laughs> they were only re-saying what had already been said and eloquently stated. Now what used to really blow my mind was when I would get, for instance, in the Britannica, I never will forget this, and notice how deep Britannica would dive sometimes into a subject, Trina, and it would dive so deep into it till it would take you to into writings wherein people had written eons ago. And I'm like, it was, it was stretch my, it was stretch my imagination because I'm wondering how in the world could these people write so eloquent that many years ago. And then it shows you the genius of God was in man early on. And that's what took me all the way back to the Tower of Babel. Babel. And it gave me new revelation for the fact that God's nature has always dwelled with man since he put man in the earth. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God said unto them, be fruitful. Notice he didn't say, go learn how to be fruitful. He said, be what you already mm. are. Be mm. fruit. You mm. have my nature. Innate or inherent to you is the ability 
to duplicate me. And so a lot of times you hear people saying stuff like, well, you got to show it to me in the scripture. Well, it's in the scripture. You just got to do the definition. You got to learn, you got to learn how to, to sometimes just squeeze the fruit of what the word is actually saying. Go back to the original language and it will yield to you the revelation necessary to stabilize your life. And so when I was hungry for this thing called abundant life, I'm like, Lord, I'm looking around the church. Where is it? And I go into Mark 10. I see Jesus says, no man that has left father, mother, sister, brother, houses, land, da, 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 da. Uh, for, for kingdom's sake, there's none of us who will not receive in this life and in the life to come 100 fold. And I would look around the church and say, Lord, where is it? Where is it? What is it? And God would show me, okay, here is what is missing. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word. But how can they hear without a preacher? How can he preach himself to be sent? And if the preacher don't preach it, the people won't hear faith mm -hmm. and the faith won't increase their responses to receiving the promises. Herein, we find difficulty in getting manifestation from God mm -hmm. because we've disassociated ourselves from the grace of faith. The readiness of mind, the sense of the possible. I, I, you know, I said a lot, didn't I? I'm supposed to be oh, go ahead, go ahead, going go from one little issue to the next. But Trina triggered something in me. She made me think about how difficult. I, I, I think that's why I'm always wanting, I'm hungry for your success, Trina. I'm hungry, Carmen, for your success. Elgin, I'm hungry. I'm hungry for your success. Cindy, I'm hungry. Believe it or not, I live in a state of hunger for my church's success. I want to see the people of God blessed. I know how to walk in blessings. I experience the manifold blessings of God. I don't have to create, conjure up, generate statements or pretend to be something I'm not. I'm telling you, I am a blessed man. And I try to share with the church and communicate eloquently to the church the things that God has done for me and try to show you how. But if you're going to resist everything first, it's going to be difficult for you to receive it second. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> wow. Don't always fight something new. Yeah. I know that if your mind has not handled something consistently, it's not easy for you to expand your imagination to conceive it. But listen, all things are possible if you can believe it. Mm. Wow. That's the way uh, people grow. That's the way for us to grow. I mean, you, you have to be open to something new. Yes. You know, and I, you tell us all the time, you know, if you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. And that's very true. And that new information is required, you know, for something new. And that's so true. I mean, it, it just, it just is. And you really have to, um, as you said, be open to something new. Because very often our first instinct is to reject something that's new or to, um, you know, if it doesn't fit neatly inside your box right then. Well, Trina, uh, Trina, give me that, Trina. Give me that. Give me that. You have it. <laughs> you know, you know I think really the reason why God allowed Paul to write the book of Galatians was primarily to show his experience in the first two chapters of how, because he had this new revelation that the church was not familiar with, but it was God's way of introducing the Gentiles, salvation to the Gentiles. And it was Paul's call to a different cause that the other disciples were not accustomed to. And so once he had evidence, then they would go back to headquarters. In today's church, you know what people do? Everybody wants to be a gatekeeper. <laughs> they want to be able to have say on what God says. That's mm. so, so true. Do you realize that the Bible was written off of the account of the testimony of men? inspired by the Holy Ghost, there is a possibility that God is getting ready to write another book. Mm. Hello? Mm. Ain't nothing <laughs> new under the sun. No. To motivate us, to stimulate us, 
to rest in the Holy Spirit and allow God to take us like he did Paul to a new zone, a new sphere. Listen, if there's a new pandemic, there's new revelation for how to deal with it. Yes. And oh boy. And that means the truth must be made available in a form of readiness that gives men the ability to adapt in a way that allows all of us to overcome it by grace. And this is the victory that over, I see you Elgin, that overcomes the world, even our faith. Talk, I'm <laughs> Bishop, I don't, you know, some of you talk, I don't have to talk to prove that I know anything. I'm, I'm happy, content listening to you, man of God. I, um, woo, man, that's, um, I, that's why I said, go ahead. <laughs> but no, um, <laughs> um, with um, NLP, Neuro Linguistics Programming, I think I said this before, um, psychiatrists and, and just scientists that they study the mind, how we think, they learn that we, we don't do negatives. Our, our brains can't, can't put together negatives. If I tell you, don't think about the purple elephant, you're gonna to have to see the purple elephant to not think about it in your spirit first. So you already thought about the purple elephant. You all hear this? Go ahead on, I love it. So, <laughs> so, so for, for someone to tell you, I can't, and I, let me say it like this too, because I can't could be like, I can't, I can't, I can't do that. That's against the will of God, but I can't violate the will of God for your righteous lifestyle. When you hear that, you have, do you realize in order to receive that I can't, you have to see the different ways that you can't do it. Yes. I'm not tall enough. Like oh. Moses said, I don't talk mm -hmm. good enough. And so yeah, you have to, you have, you have, so your mind is, is going to be attracted to what you think. So you see yourself failing the way you're going to fail because you thought to, you were going to fall that way. It's that's you awesome. that's creating your reality. So then if we have faith now, faith says, no, well, I can do all things through Christ Jesus. You know, and sometimes you got to line them up like Cindy, four or five confessions in a row, like just dropping the word in the spirit. So you can see the reality of what God has for you. And then there's other times when you don't, you don't have no chance. You really don't see it, but you do have faith to just step on out and just get it. Because you know, Paul, the man, man of God walked in the water, that is, he never saw anybody walk in the water, but Jesus standing down in the water. So he had no point of reference, okay? Yeah. Obviously, I can't, wasn't on his mind. Jesus told him to come, he got out, so I'm coming. But that part where he gets out the boat, that's extreme faith, no point of reference. I, have, I don't have any negative toward it, I, but you said do it, I'm going to do it, you're doing it, I'm doing it, we're going to do it, I'm stepping out the boat. It was at the point of time when he went back to his known point of reference, I'm on water. Water's not solid. Water <laughs> start sinking. You know, he took his eyes off of, uh, I like the way the Bible puts it, just took his eyes off of Jesus and began to sink. Jesus mm -hmm. being the author and the developer or the finisher of our faith. He took his eyes off faith and the development of faith and began to sink. But faith is, once again, Trina, it's an intentional behavior. That's why we live by faith. We walk by faith. We talk by faith. Everything mm -hmm. we do that's not of faith is sin. I'm getting people calling in. So anyways, uh, that's the thing that I'm hearing in my spirit, man. It's like, wow. So really, I have to, I have to, I have to bombard myself. If 150,000 cans come in compared to the, the few cans I'm getting, I need to intentionally bombard myself. Like I'm doing warfare, like aerial bombs dropping in my spirit with words that are going to intensely motivate, direct, and prepare my mind to walk in the realities of God. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Man, that was so eloquently stated. Y'all go was. ahead. I'm, I'm just excited. Go ahead. Just. Well, I know I was, um, it really made me think about how prudent some of us can be with things like doing our monthly bills, sitting down and doing our monthly bills, making out our checks and um putting, adding things to the shopping list and all those different things like that. And one of the things that we can, one of the ways we can kind of look at this is, because it might seem overwhelming to someone who has not gone through that before, somebody that's newly walking in the Lord. But one of the things that we can kind of parallel it to is like making out a, um, sitting down and doing our bills. We sit down and we plan out the things that we're going to do 
that is going to help us to, to bring out the best version of ourselves. You know, what, like I said before, what does that look like? What things do we need to change? Um, what things do we need to do differently? In what ways do we need to do them differently? And, you know, just sticking to that old rebuke, replace and recite. You know, when the devil comes at you with a lie, you rebuke it, you replace it with the truth, which is the word of God. And then you recite it, you say it out loud, you feed it back, you use it. That is your weapon. Uh, and, and like Elgin said, it basically is, we're talking about the mind and the brain and the thoughts that could seem like warfare, <laughs> you know, because it seems like sometimes when you make up your mind to do something, you get all these different distractions coming from, you know, not just from the North, South and East and West, but a hundred different ways, you know? And so one of the things that we can do is in addition to being habitual with it, is to always be prepared to use scripture, which is the truth, and that will silence the liar, okay? Yeah. And then give you some strength and boost your faith at the same time. And these are the things that we're talking about, just sitting down and, and just kind of giving yourself some time to make that investment because you are a millionaire. You wow. are prosperous. You yeah. are a child of God. You mm -hmm. are, you know, all of the things that God says that you are, you need to start visualizing those things. And just like Bishop said, the habit of the mind we cultivate has a lot to do with the way that we think and process things. And in our in our in just our perspective of you know when we do encounter something negative, you know, that we have to overcome. So these are things that's really, really important to not just building, but sustaining our faith in God. Trina, that's yes. awesome, Carmen. That is so awesome. Uh Trina, let's move to another side here rather than comment on this. I mentioned earlier also that. I fast whenever I notice my flesh is trying to dominate my spirit, mm. my spirit life, and my responses to things start becoming fleshy. Those are signals mm. for me to get back to fasting so that I can give my, make sure that my spirit has control over my trinity. My mm. trinity. Mm -hmm. What do you all think about that? Because see, it's very important. I didn't call a corporate fast this year because I wasn't led. I usually call one if God tells me to. I'm not in the habit of calling a fast for the church that God didn't, the Holy Spirit didn't lead me to call. I mean, it's like, we're just gonna really be kind of wasting our time. As, as I don't need people expecting from something that God did not initiate. The mm. Bible says whatsoever is not of faith, if it does not originate in God, it's mm. sin. Mm. So we're depending upon now a practice rather than a promise. And that's not what God wants us to do. Uh, he's the author and finisher of our faith. So in reality, if God had told me to fast corporately, I would have set a fast for the church. But what I've been doing personally all of my life is, Trina, whenever I notice my flesh trying to dominate, it is not hard to tell, you know, <laughs> trying to dominate my spirit life or my responses are becoming more fleshy. That's a signal for me to pull back some, even if it's just a day. I don't have to set up a fast where, oh, I'm gonna fast five days. Oh, I'm gonna fast 10 days. No, no, no. Sometimes it's just take what the flesh uses for strength today and focus, pray and, and pray and use petitions and give things through that exchange until you empower yourself back to peace in righteousness, and then you're ready to move forward. So talk to mm -hmm. me about that some, Trina. Well, that I, I really appreciated that part of the lesson um, because one thing you mentioned was that, you know, you wouldn't take stock of yourself. And see, I feel like that's a really important point not to uh, overlook is the value of self-assessment. Beautiful. You know, 
you have to be able to be honest with yourself, wow. mm -hmm. you know, about what, what you're manifesting or what, um, just about you, you got to assess yourself. That's the best way I can, can just say it, but it's just so important. A lot of people, um, and I think for most people, it's easier to see what other people are doing wrong. Thank you. It's a lot harder for you to take a hard look at yourself. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes even you have to, uh, that's something that sometimes you got to pray about to ask God to show you yourself from a different perspective or show me, you know, mm -hmm. what I need to work on in me, you know, mm -hmm. if you have people around you that can give you um, valuable um, critiques or give you valuable assessment mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. right spirit, mm -hmm. you know, that can be helpful too for self-assessment. And the more you become aware of yourself, the more you can um, become good at just what you said, being able to see, you know, well, I've been real kind of short with people lately, or yeah. you've been eating a whole bunch of uh, comfort food or junk food <laughs> lately, you know, or I just, you know, I sure haven't been getting, I've been staying up late, getting up early, which the Bible tells us is vanity, you know, okay. so mm -hmm. we have to learn how to assess ourselves to even know when to implement um, uh, some kind of control, you know, and fasting is the absolute best way I know. Mm. Yes. 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 Flesh. I mean, it, it, and it's funny to me because sometimes I can be, uh, wanting to fast just out of health, you know, cause you feel so much better when you fast. Right. It seemed like I can stick to that more easily than if I'm trying to do a fast for spiritual purposes where I'm having to fast and pray. And that seems so much harder. <laughs> That's spiritual warfare. The devil uh -huh. gets in the mix. He don't want you maturing spiritually. That's right. That's right. And so I know that that's the right thing to do. I mean, the growth that comes from mm -hmm. fasting. I mean, I don't know any other way really to get that flesh under control, mm -hmm. to subdue your flesh. Um, we did that. We, meaning me and my husband, we were dating. Um, once we were engaged, we decided right, we're going to do right. We're going to walk the straight and narrow. We're not fornicating no more. We're going to be right. <laughs> and so, I love it. <laughs> I, it was about probably, it was, it was nine months before we got married. And that was, you know, something we did together is we were fasting uh, weekly. And so we had to hold each other accountable. We had to you know, we have had to do it together and that has served yeah. us well through the years, you know. Um, but that's, I mean, that's just the reality okay. of it. If you want to get your flesh under control, you have to decide and put into action the fact that your spirit is making the decisions here. My flesh is not making the decisions. My wow. spirit is making the decisions and that's what we mm -hmm. three mm -hmm. of us Spirit, body, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, soul. That's what we're gonna do, you know. So we gotta let the spirit lead and make that flesh get in line where it's supposed to be. So yeah, I, I'm a big proponent of uh, the power of fasting for health benefits and for spiritual uh, growth. Now, mm -hmm. see, see, Trina, that was so eloquently stated. I uh, I really appreciate that because again, I know somebody out there needed to hear that because. Uh, you know, we mm -hmm. need to use fasting as a measure of uh, keeping ourselves under control. The Bible says, and you hear this from me all the time, he that knoweth not how to rule his own spirit is like mm -hmm. a city that is broken down and without mm -hmm. walls. So it's very mm -hmm. important for us to be able to rule our own spirits. Elgin, let me go here with you on this. I know sure. you're going to jump in on that, but let me say this. Let me take you somewhere else because I want to help the people from several perspectives to learn how to operate out of the best version of themselves. I mentioned earlier today uh, that there is in this life, in the religious community, Elgin, there are some religious people who are very messy. And I, I'll let you and Carmen, both of y'all can be thinking about this. There are some people that's very messy. So for that reason, in order to live the best version of yourself, you have to make a conscious decision that you are going to be surrounded by people who influence you to activate your heavenly conscious rather than your world consciousness. Because of the messiness of some people, they're always introducing unrighteous things for you to think about. And it's difficult to be 
functional towards creativity and thinking about foolishness. And are you all with me? Mm -hmm. So it's very important to get your life off the launching pad that you surround yourself with people. I want y'all to take this. Surround yourself with people who are going to help you to think uh, directionally, purposefully. You see that now? In righteousness, so that you can focus on your creative genius, that part of you that lies dormant because we think about everything except how to be the best version of ourselves. Either one of you can go first. Oh. Um, I, um, so, so, you know, I'm still that, that picture of that, of that field, you know? Um, I, if I'm a farmer, man, I'm working. I ain't got time for that. You, if you're not here to help me with this field, bye, I'm busy. Because see, one thing for sure, seasons are going to come and seasons are going to go. And seasons ain't going to wait for me. Harvest season ain't, is, is going to show up when it show up. So I got to do my diligence now, like the end. I got to store up for the winter. I got I to I I make preparation. I got to do this now. And so, um, yeah, uh, you got to be careful who you have around you. Some things are unavoidable, you know. Um, you at work, your colleagues, you know, it's little water cooler moments. Maybe that's avoidable. We go leave the water cooler alone, go sit at your desk. I don't know. Um, and, uh, yeah, other things are unavoidable. You know, you got certain family members. You know, you just, you gonna deal with them. It could be your spouse. You know, it could be your kids. It could be your mom. Dad. So some things are unavoidable, uh, but as as best as possible. Not you know, we talk about being a good steward over our finances. You need to be a good steward over your relationships and the airspace around you too, and what you're allowing in. Once again, you know, talking about the field and the parable of the field in the Bible, talking about the wheat and the tear growing up together, and how the enemy came at night and 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 tried to uproot and and throw other seeds in the field. That's, that's speaking of that same thing, you know, um, for example, we said a few weeks ago, and people got mad at me, I'm sure, you know, falling asleep with the headsets in your ear, listening to nonsense. You wow. got seed, you, are, you have intentionally set yourself up for seed that is not in alignment with righteousness, God's will for your life, God's way of living in the earth for you. And now it's being deposited in the field of your mind. And then you mad tomorrow when you react a certain way. But you know, you've been sowing a seed every night anyways. It's really on you. You know, the seed is, the harvest is only gonna represent the seed that was sown. The seed that was sown is by you. It's not by the devil. God ain't gonna say he'll give you the seed, give seed to the sower, but you got to go sow the seed. So then likewise, the people around me that are constantly broadcasting seeds out of the mouth and behavior, I have to be mindful of that because I'm, 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 I'm a winner. And winners, winners hang around winners. Uh oh, that's a man around. Uh oh, that's good. I don't know if you want to say something on that, or you want to hold off for the next. Well, point. well, just, just you know, it's it's very easy to 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 see. Well, birds of a feather flock together. Oh. So if you're if you're picking up behaviors, or you're noticing behaviors that really don't seem like you, or you doing things, you know. You turn around barking at people when somebody says something to you instead of speaking out of love, then, you know, that's an indication of some change. That's some need of change, right? So to, to really help you get to the, the best version of you, like Trina said, do a self-assessment. Get all those things out on paper so you can see what you're dealing with, so you can see the things that you need to overcome, that you need to pray about, that you need to lay at the throne of God, you know, and, um, and just really remember that, you know, in order to grow spiritually in Christ, you need to surround yourself by like-minded people. Wow. And, you know, that can look like maybe... Maybe you're a single mother, maybe find a single, single mother's group in the church, or maybe you're interested in being a prayer partner. Um, just joining some of the church organizations will help you to start surrounding yourself with people who are on the same journey. Well, not the same journey, but on the similar, they're going in the same direction that you're heading. And, um, and those are some of the things I think that you know, once we start doing that, once we identify those things, and once we complete our true self-assessment, <laughs> wow. like Trina said, be honest. 
Yeah. Get bring out the good, the bad, and the ugly, whatever that looks like, <laughs> you know. And then the that that is when we start to see that success. It's like with you, you just started seeing and noticing that things were was changing, you know, as you did things, as you fasted, as you prayed, yes. as you continually made up your mind each and every day that you were going to walk in the ways of the Lord. Yes. It eventually took you step by step, you know, and you were able to overcome those things that were challenging. And so God will do that for all of us. Yeah. Well, well, what I'm going to do here, that's powerful. Um, thank you. Now for this last point, here's what I want us to do. Uh, I want you all, I'm going to talk about two things, thinking assistances and planning assistances. I want you all to offer to our listeners some assistances, some things that either you use or that you know may work for them, you know, because I've tried a variety of things before I was able to literally put my hands on what works for me. Being someone who journals, it was easy for me to find out, find the nature of the type of things that would work for me because I learned a lot about the uniformity of self. You know, that's another conversation. Uh, when you discover a side of you conceptually, there's this thing called, from exploration, the uniformity of self. I learned how uh, things fit my spirit like they do my, phys my physique. How about that? Notice, mm. in the, I, I'm this size. I, have, I wear this, I wear that, I wear this, and I wear that, right? I know my length, I know my waist, I know my blah, 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 blah. So, so likewise, I said, God, if I can learn my natural tailor increments, why can't I know my spiritual? And he said, because you haven't asked. So you have not because you ask not. So mm -hmm. if you don't seek it, you won't find it. I know it because I pertain to it. I went on a quest for it. And so I know what things look like that will fit me before I get to them. Now, in closing, from my perspective, Winston Churchill said, um, you know, we can choose to think as an optimist and have a positive view of life, or we can choose to think as a pessimist. So he said, a pessimist sees difficulty in every opportunity, but an optimist sees opportunity in every difficulty. I love that. Mm. But then he said, Difficulties mastered are opportunities won. So I wanted us to conclude tonight by dealing with this uh, intent, the fact that intentional thinking is work. Mm. Is that right, Trina? Is that right, Elgin? Is that right, uh, mm. Carmen? Intentional yes. thinking is work. And sometimes intentional thinking is hard work. Yes. It's laborious, it's challenging. Now, what I want to assign to our listeners tonight, and I'm going to let you all do a very informative job in helping me convey this point, is how to acquire thinking assistances and planning assistances. They can use gadgets. You can use, uh, I don't know what you're familiar with, but I want to give you the opportunity tonight to share with our audience some pathways to what might help them initiate becoming their best version of themselves this January so they have something to look forward to the rest of the year. Thinking assistances and planning assistances, two of the most strategic instrumentalities that we need to get started. Okay. I'm well, speak uh, on as, far as, thinking, as far as thinking assistance goes, um, for, for me, what I do um, to manage what helps me as far as uh, thinking, keeping um, my thoughts on track, um, is I use uh, social media um, in my favor, to work in my favor. Yeah. So that um, if I have, I subscribe to Facebook groups that are consistent with my thoughts or what I want it to be, or so I can see people that are where I want to be, hear their journey, hear their advice um, for Facebook and also for YouTube. I can remember when... Um, my older daughter was much younger. Um, I would sporadically check, you know, what she's ingesting as far as social media goes. And um, I remember going through her YouTube subscription and she must've had 200 
of more YouTube subscriptions. And some of that stuff did not reflect who she is or who I know that she is moving towards being. So I had her, I don't know how long it took her, but she did it. Um, I had her to go through those subscriptions and write on a piece of paper, old school, which one she's deleting and why. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. What is it about that YouTube subscription that you know does not match you and, and give me that reason for why you chose to delete that from your, uh, your subscription to that particular, um, you know, influencer or whoever that person was. And um, I remember she had a long list and it made her have to, um, to self-assess, you know, it's almost like you, you, you look at that and then you look at yourself in the mirror and see, okay, does this match up? It doesn't. And so those things that don't match up are those things that you get rid of. And so to me, that's one way of controlling your thinking or supporting your, your thinking by making sure that whatever pops up, you know, cause you know, it's going to have with the phone. Y'all know stuff pops up as a recommendation or something to look at those recommendations and things aren't so far off from who you are. Once you've established a pattern online that shows what you're interested in. Wow. And so if you're getting a bunch of recommendations that are way off base, mm -hmm. well, I mean, it's to the point now that YouTube will even ask you, is this a good recommendation for you? Was this video a good recommendation for you? Um, and you can, you know, <clears throat> say, no, I wasn't interested in that, that you recommended. And then they, if it's yes, they'll say, oh, well, we'll recommend more videos like this one. Wow. I didn't know what, that. I'm just saying, take advantage of That's good. social good media. Technology. Yeah. yeah, that's you know, Trina, that's that's the one I was going to use. Trina was uh, for me, it's YouTube, mm -hmm. um, because um, and I was thinking about it one day. I was shopping. And I said, I keep telling the people YouTube is a good source, but I I, I failed to mention that if you want, like, if you play on your smartphone and you wanted to um, my my thinking, my, my thinking example, if you want to still hear the the service and you cut your phone off because you want the battery to die, you had to cut the YouTube off too. But you can pay a subscription, a small subscription amount. And YouTube will play if your phone off. I mean, as far as the screen off, you can sit it down and keep playing. So I'm in a store shop and I put my little AirPods in. I don't know if you can see them. You know I mean, right now. And mm -hmm. I just got the word pumping from my spirit sometime, be in a store and stop. What do you say? Rewind. Go back. I'm listening. And I let it play and let it play, let it play. Even more of a blessing is that you can um, subscribe to certain channels. You can subscribe to, for example, um, strong example, subscribe to Crown Kingdom Cultural Center. You can play. The services you can play the master class you can play the marriage ministry you can play the youth you can play these things and just hear it in your ear while you're walking around you're sitting at the house washing the dishes cutting the yard so these are things that you can do um and i'm gonna be honest with you, i'm gonna share a testimony so now um as of what maybe the past week and a half about five days ago a week and a half before then i noticed fleshy responses i noticed yeah, uh, struggling with stuff and hiccuping things that, uh, I mean, I said, ooh, I'm no better than that, you know? Or, or you know, I'm be kind of cruel. You know, sometimes you, you, you vomit and you kind of come up and don't come all out. I have no kind of <laughs> get it back down, hold up. And I said, what's going on? I said, oh, but see, for the past week and a half, I haven't been doing that much moving around outside the regular parameters where I actually have these in my ears, listening to the words. So then I learned from that. Okay, first of all, get back to your intentional, thinking okay and i learned from that you need more than one thinking mechanism oh because this may not be working today you might have another one and you know on the side you want to get like bishop said he had index cards in his pocket mm -hmm. you know so <laughs> have several methods put it around like you're trying to protect your house so you fellas don't tell me you protect your house you got a gun under the bed you got a weapon over there you got a phone over there to call you got a panic you got every, all across the house you got you got backup Back yourself up like that with the word and have different methods that you can call on in case one filters out for you. You may not be able to look at your index cards today. You may not be able to listen to this today. Do you have a backup plan? That's intentional thinking. And those are thinking mechanisms that'll help you learn and keep focused. I got off focus. I walked away from my intentional thinking and I saw the problem, started seeing the hiccups, but I was able to catch it. Okay, get back on track. And I knew what the difference was. Hearing the word, reading the word, speaking the word, 
is a difference maker for you. And if you don't have that difference maker in your life intentionally, man, you're just going to struggle. You're going to wrestle around that dust. <laughs> wow. Anyway. That's my uh, I like I like to add an intentional thinking with a purpose because that was powerful, Elgin. That that was really good. I know for me, I am going to say I'd like to challenge them and tell them how I did it, just in their thinking as well. But I want them to do something proactive, like um, <clears throat> excuse me, if you if you use often practice or, or make use of the book of cuss, for example, maybe today is a cuss free day. You know, that's a way, one of the ways that we can reshape your thinking. Or maybe if you tend to be kind of a negative person, maybe you wanna only speak positive thoughts one day. So, you know, like you might just do something like, Today, I will not utilize the word can't. You know, it could be, it could be just as simple as, as that, or it could be as complex as, you know, I will only speak positive thoughts today. I will only think positive thoughts today. And it sounds like it's simple, but for some of us, it might actually be uh, very complicated to achieve that. So I just want to challenge you to do something like that, you know, to, to help you readjust your way of thinking. Think about something you can do to implement a positive measure in your day. And that's, uh, that's something that I did. And, and also, if I could just throw this in real quick, the importance of really reading the word and praying, I don't think we can really say enough about how important that is to anything that you're doing. Um, but to get get that, that um, just build a, a um, make it a habit form, you're doing it so often and so consistently um, that you're reading the word and that you're praying, even if it's just five minutes every morning, you know, that you pray or, you know, you just read one chapter every day, set something like make it intentional and then set that up and then just honor it. And then just kind of walk through as you, um, as God reveals certain things to you. You know, things that you may need to overcome, things that might be in need of change, but you can always pray as well and ask God to show you ways to please him. And that's always something good to do. Okay, neither of you mentioned um, for planning, SMART goals, the acronym SMART. Mm. How many of you know what that means? The S is for, keep it what? Simple? Huh? Tell us, Bishop. I, don't, I ain't gonna I'm talk about it. I don't know. <laughs> measurable, you. M? M is uh, measurable, yeah. Measurable, mm -hmm. A. We got a spell right now. I think it's achievable. For achievable, A. Mm -hmm. A R. Um, why don't I just look that up? <laughs> what, what, what was that? T is time. <laughs> Uh, setting smart goals. See, okay. while she's looking that up, and I've got it in my book. Specific. She... Go ahead, on Trina. I'm sorry. S was for specific. Specific. There you go. Yes. Got to be specific. M was measurable. A is attainable. Attainable. Mm -hmm. Which I I say achievable because that's what we right. use in school. But anyway, um, R is relevant. There you go. Mm. And T is time based. You got to set a time. All mm. right, so and that's it. Right, smart. No E on that or no A on that or nothing. No. Okay. <laughs> now, okay. So with me, and, and this I'll, I'll conclude with this and I'll let you all finish. Um, okay. When the Holy Spirit was dealing with me and I wrote the structure book, the one thing he impressed upon me once the my vision was made clear uh, was that my time needed an assignment. Now, that's when I started journaling. I, boy, I tried everything I could as a, as a, mod, a, a planning module 
Because again, think about it like this. If my problem is not starting, it's keeping going, I needed something that would give me momentum, enough mm -hmm. to ride the wave to the mm -hmm. next day. And mm -hmm. something that would give me a spirit of continuum. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I kept looking, boy, I would get people's manuals and they would, I would get in quicksand real quick, bogged down because they said it worked for them, but it didn't work for me. And so one day, the Holy Spirit helped me to set my time up in what's called zones, time zones. Mm. This is what really ministered to me because it dealt with the relativity, just like the smart goals do. It was relevant. It was relevant to me. It was specific for me. It, it, it was measurable for me. And so when I set up the zones, I was able to work from the spirit all the way down to the actual goal and or objective pertaining to the natural things that needed to be included in my daily priorities. And I'm telling you, it made it so easy for me once I start looking at life from a perspective of zones to keep going. And the mm -hmm. next thing you know, I was graduating. Now I was not just a starter, I was a finisher. And the little small goals that I would accomplish, small objectives became, became my momentum for great goals and greater objectives. And it, all of a sudden, I started believing I could achieve anything. And today, I have the kind of readiness of mind wherein if, you, if God sells it to me, I buy it and it's done because I'm going to do what it takes and I will, I will persist until I succeed. So, uh, you know, you all can close us out now. I'll just kind of listen and, and let you finalize the program. But I will be back tomorrow long enough to talk about uh, first fruits. I want to talk about God and first mm. thing, 12 noon. And I'm going to do that just for about 20, 20 minutes or so. Hopefully I can get it done uh, uh, in, in, a, in, a, in a short span of time so I can hit the major points and get everybody ready to take advantage of this first month of the year. I'll go first then. Um, one, because I had one more thing I wanted to say about um, the thinking and planning assistance is, well, two things actually. Uh, write it down, just like you were talking about smart goals. You know, that's is so detailed that you really do have to write it down. But even if it's not uh, a goal with, written with that much specificity, even just to have things that are important to you or points you want to remember or even scripture, write it down. Put it in, in front of you. I always uh, think mm -hmm. of the meal. I remember going up in her room one day and that girl had sticky notes everywhere. Uh, you know, and it was bits of encouragement to herself. It was scriptures. It was lyrics from songs. Some of it was, you know, words that she had written, poetry and stuff she had written. But she had sticky notes everywhere. <laughs> Dresser on the wall, on the mirror. But that was her way of keeping her thoughts aligned. And so I thought that was, uh, that always sticks with me. Um, and that's something that we, that we actually taught in children's church years ago is we taught the kids mm -hmm. to write that scripture and stick it somewhere on your yeah, wall. Yeah. Sometimes we would yeah. decorate it with glitter and stickers and, you know, let them draw on it, get it real personable mm -hmm. and put it on your bathroom mirror. You know, I am the righteousness of God, or I am yes. the grace. You know, I pursue peace. Whatever mm -hmm. we try to teach them, we will have them to write it out, decorate it, kind of make it your own, and put it in front of you. You know, so that you it you see it every day, you think it because you see it, and it becomes a part of who you are. So that's one thing I wanted to um, add, and the last thing I wanted to add was using your calendar on your phone mm -hmm. or even your alarms on your phone to remind you to take that, like Carmen was saying, five minutes to, to pray or to, to read, uh, you know, a certain uh, alert on your phone to do, to read your scripture or to read your mm -hmm. chapter day or to mm -hmm. pray for other people and alert to pray for yourself or mm -hmm. you just to, to put some systems in place so that you can stay on track or get on track um, mm -hmm. by having those systems in place to, to guide your behavior. Um, so I, I think that was the main thing I wanted to say. So uh, this has been a great lesson, a great conversation. 
Um, and so I hope those that are watching can find something of value that they can use to apply because it's good to talk about these things. Mm -hmm. But it means, it means okay. nothing if you don't put it into practice. Okay. Amen. I just yeah, encourage um, everybody, even including myself, just encouraging myself to just um, take this lesson to heart and to really implement it so we can Amen. become people of, of means. Yeah. Like what I was saying earlier about the belief versus the faith. You know, you believe that God's speaking right now, but faith is when you take what you hear him speaking and you actually do it. You implement it. You put it into action. And it's at the point of faith that God meets us. And it's the point of faith the manifestation happens. It's the point of faith that increase happens. It's the point of faith. So we, you know, we're already equipped for it. We just have to step out there and do it. And like you said, it, it's it's there's nobody here. Uh, I think Bishop uh, people say we say we we have to intentionally think and focus on being that person, being that kind of child of God. We'll be on focusing on faith and the the, the possibilities and, and what He has for us and walking in righteousness. It's it's a, it's a daily thing. You have to once again the mind is a field. You have to intentionally monitor and watch that field as much as possible you put safeguards in place so the field is protected so we were talking about planning assistance um bishop mentioned that he did distinguish between thinking and planning um for me um i just know um thanks to uncle sam u.s army i wake up at 5 5 30 every morning no alarm clock eyes wide open staring at the ceiling it doesn't matter if i got three hours of sleep the night before it does not matter my eyes go boom <laughs> wide open and so <laughs> I said, hey, if I'm going to be up, let's get this word cracking. Let's get some confessions. Let me get a, a few few minutes here with devotion. I'm listening to one of our Bishop's sermons and just let it play while I'm getting ready. Um, and have my time of devotion. Adam walked with God in the cool of the day. They, every day they did this. It was a planned thing. It was what they did. It's their, it was their thing. And so have your thing, your thing that you plan with God and mark it on your calendar, you know, and, and don't let anybody violate that time. Amen. You know, that's precious time. Protect that time, you know. Um, and once again, having the right people around you. And and that's that's what I do. And so it's that's 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 the part of my plan. Do I always hit that goal? Do I always wake up every morning and jump? No, but you better believe the great portion of the time out of all the times and opportunities I have when God blesses me with a new day, I am starting with devotion. Now, the way you start your day is the way you're going to finish. Remember, they always told you that. So mm -hmm. start your day with the word, you know, uh, make that part of your plan. And, and listen, well, I don't feel like reading. Well, then play the word. Well, I don't feel mm -hmm. like listening. Up to, well, read the word. I don't feel like reading or listen. Well, speak the word. Do, do something. Talk to God. Meet God. And exercise your faith so he can move in your life like never before. I love y'all. That's my comment, my closing comment for the night. Well, I just want to say one thing about what you said, and that is, I mean, it's it's just real clear how intentional we have to be. And it's really not that difficult. Um, I used to wake up at four. That's when I would read my word and pray. My children were still asleep. And that was the only time I, I could just find it was just me and God. And so maybe your time is not four. Maybe it's a different time of the day, but just purpose, just, just be intentional and be intentional with a purpose. And um, you will, you will succeed because God will not leave you standing uh, without his love, without his grace, without his mercy and without his guidance. And so that's the word I'd like to leave them with. Amen. I'm an elder still. Are you back here with this yet? I don't think so. I think she wanted you to close us out with. Well, we're going to go ahead and close this out then. Listen, um, we're talking about being intentional. It's being intentional with our seeds. You know, we believe the word of God tells us that we'll prosper if we sow seed. We believe that. Mm -hmm. But faith is going to be the next step. And that is actually taking yes. that seed and intentionally sowing that seed in mm -hmm. good ground. And uh, mm -hmm. we um, here on the panel, and I know many of you watching and listening right now know that Crown Kingdom Coastal Center is good ground. It's yes. good ground. It's good ground. It's good ground. Amen. Now, if you want to sow, um, or let me say it like this. Now, if you want to sow, when you sow in the Crown Kingdom Coastal Ministry, you can go to www.fbjm.org. That's FBJM, Finance Bush General Ministries, fbjm.org, and you can leave your gifts there. You can tithe there. You can sow a seed there. Uh, you can be a blessing to this ministry. As you know, the seed that you sow, the harvest will be greater. Now, when you sow the seed, be intentional. Be intentional. Yes.
Put some give it a purpose. Seed. Give it a purpose. That that seed. Yes. You got. You have faith to sow the seed. So go ahead and let your faith decree the thing that you want from the seed. Okay, mm. and believe God to move mm. in your life for that situation. Yes. Now, when it comes down to the man of God that uh, has left our presence now, we'll be back again with us tomorrow. I think you said 12 noon um, on Facebook Live. Uh, if you want to sow a seed into Dr. Finest Bush Jr., you can go to Cash App. And that's going to be dollar sign Finest F I N A C E Bush B U S H Jr. That's just J R. And you can sow a seed into the man of God there. We, and we really be uh, grateful uh, for you for doing that because we love him and you want him to be blessed abundantly and we will love yes. to partner with you. Everybody listen, let's, 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 let's sow a seed, let's share, let's, let's partner together, let's do this thing, let's build this kingdom uh, one seed at a time, one seed at yes. a time, but let's do it by faith, let's do it intentional and let's do it on purpose. And I think that's going to be it for tonight. Yes. Oh, um, Marriage Monday coming up, this coming Monday, right, Trina? Yes, and we will have um, some very special guests, a couple. Um, so I'm looking forward to that being a very um, a good. I, I hate to say episode because it's not a TV show, but a, <laughs> it's going to be a good presentation. Um, I think there'll be a lot to learn. Um, so I'm excited about it. So yes, we will be back on on Monday, and um, everybody, please join us and. Um, have some uh, friends or other couples, anybody that you think can benefit from them, send them our way. It doesn't cost a thing. You just tune in and get that information and I'll uh, grow Amen. from it. Amen. 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 All right, ladies and gents, with nothing else being said, our hearts and minds clear. We can go ahead yes. and hang up for the night. Cindy's not back, so we're just going to have to leave the, uh, the Zoom call. Oh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm back, door. but I wasn't oh, back to come oh, on. Cindy, you... <laughs> <laughs>